Let's be open and honest. This morning, as I think about addictions and what we use to numb our life, you know, for me, I'm 50 years old, never been anything to do with alcohol, not thinking about drugs, though there's a lot of people that are addicted to these things, and maybe you're watching right now and you're addicted to it. The biggest issue with addiction, most of the time it sneaks up on you and you don't even know that you are. And we use addictions in all kinds of ways to numb the pain of our life. I give you a quick one minute rundown of my story. Heather and I got married. She continued on to school. She got out of school. We got pregnant. Actually, she did. We had Mitchell when he was born. We realized he had Down syndrome. And that was a topsy-turvy in our life and an upside down. It was so scary when we decided to have a second child because the odds increased so much more that our next child would have Down syndrome also. We had Caitlin and decided no more kids. That was it. And then some years later, Heather comes in and we become foster parents. We opened up and became that. We got a child in. Over the next year of our life, we had a couple of other kids come in and we ended up adopting that boy. And he turns 14 today. Fast forward, we are no longer foster parents, but we decide to open back up. And when we open back up for foster care, we end up opening up and we have a little girl come into our house. And six months later, we have twin 16-year-old girls come into our house. Then, it was during that time that our daughter, Caitlin, got diagnosed with a brain tumor. You're talking about stresses and pains in your life. I was a health nut, exercising, eating right, and all of a sudden, one Oreo became two Oreos. One scoop of ice cream became two scoops of ice cream. To where next thing you know, a cup of ice cream wasn't enough. It was a whole bowl of ice cream. Then it was a whole bowl of ice cream with Oreos crumbled over top. And then it was Oreo cookies with ice cream. And off to the side was a bag. You know, those big family-sized bags of M&Ms. And it didn't matter to me if it was caramel or if it was peanut or plain. I was eating them off on the side. And what I didn't realize I was doing was I allowed those things to become my numbing mechanism. I was quickly becoming addicted to this food. And what happens when you get addicted to those kind of foods, you can't ever get enough. There's never enough to satisfy. And you know the reality is, is that I still tried to work out and outdo it and say, no, I've got this, I've got it, I've got it. That's the problem with addiction. That's the problem with numbing our lives. That is, we try to numb our lives with food. There's a lot of people that are addicted to a food and they use it when they get sad, when they're happy and they're celebrating, when they're all alone, with them, whether they're a group of people. My question to you is, what is your numbing mechanism? What is the thing you turn to that now has control of you and you no longer have control of it? See, for you today, if you would take a moment and write it down, maybe share it in this post. I know, very few people will because they're scared to identify it. But what I've realized is, is that the health journey I'm on, that all those pains that we were going through were still there. And the ice cream, the Oreo cookies, the little Debbie cakes, the M&Ms, they didn't solve one issue. All they did was gain me weight, 
gain me inflammation and make me feel like I was starving to death. What are you numbing your life with? What is your addiction? Sometimes we have to look ourselves in the mirror. Hey, holy and healthy living, that's the journey I'm on. And as I finish up this walk, I hope that you will take this journey with me. Hey, contact us. We can help you in the first stages of this journey. May God bless you. No matter where you go, no matter where you go, there you are. This is something that I think about because for every single one of us that are going through this day, it's a Tuesday. It's just a normal day. I'm out here at sunrise. Sun's up above the tree line now. And what I realize is, is no matter where I go, there I am. Maybe you go, boy, Chad, you've been walking too long. You done forgot what you're doing. Here's what I want you to think about. We spend our time, effort, energy, trying to get everyone around us to like us. We spend our time, effort, energy, trying to find the right person to be in our life. We spend all of our time, effort, energy, getting frustrated because people let us down. We, we spend all of our time, effort, and energy trying to find the, the right person to, to, to get around and, and to be around. Here's what people miss in their life. And it's a huge miss because ultimately what we miss is, is that there's one person in your life 24-7, 365. You. Do you realize that every single person has some, I don't know, 10, 20, 30,000 thoughts every hour? So here you are walking around with yourself every single day looking for something outside and everybody else getting frustrated because they don't like you or getting frustrated because of this and that and another. Trying to find the right person. When you come to the reality that the greatest thing you can do right now is become the right person because you live with yourself every single day day every second I'm with myself so I have to decide in my mind what am I going to do with my thoughts what am I going to do with myself it's time it's time to go look in the mirror and make that decision am I on the right health journey am I on the right mental journey am I on the right financial journey Am I on the right thought process journey? I know this. I'm on the right health journey. My mental mind is getting sharper every single day. My spiritual life is getting renewed every single morning with my walks with God. I hope in this day that you will take a moment to say, hey, no matter where I go, there I am. How are you thinking? Let's find ourselves being the right person instead of just going out trying to find the right person. Hey, if you need help, and I believe there's somebody that does, on this health journey, know that my name's Chad. I believe in holy and healthy living. It's all facets of my life, and I have a plan, and Heather and I are on this journey together. Come join us. Contact us today. Now's the time. We'll catch you guys next time. I have a super participation challenge announcement that's going to happen in two days. Today's Wednesday, Thursday, on Friday at 6.30 
a.m. I have tagged my nephew Logan in this. This challenge is a challenge that we have set up and it is to honor our military families. In specific, we are aware that the numbers are different and I look it up, you can look it up, but they vary between 17 and 22 of our military men and women commit suicide every single day. This challenge is to let people know that you're not alone. I do challenges almost on a weekly basis. I don't post them, I don't talk about them, they're just my own personal journey of what I strive after. My hope is, is that you will join us on Friday morning between 6.30 and about 6.55 is about how long it will go. This challenge is the challenge of 22s. My hope is, is that you will join us, you will share the post. It is not some gimmick to try to, to get likes or anything. This is not a challenge between me and my nephew. This is a challenge to bring awareness, to push our bodies a little farther than we think they can go, to prepare for the moment to do it. You can participate in this in one of the 22 rounds and you can do a couple of other things. So join us on Friday for this special super challenge. I want you to also think about what or who is the foundation of your life. When the storms of life hit and everything comes crashing down, the thing that's left is your foundation. I just want you to know that as much as I talk about our health journey, it is about holy and healthy living for me. Jesus is the foundation of my life. Over the next week or so, we're gonna spend just a little bit of walk and talk time talking about our foundation. Look at your foundation. What is the foundation of your life or who is the foundation of your life? Is it solid? When the storms hit, what or who will hold you up? For me, it's Jesus because one day, no matter how much I work out, no matter how good I eat, I'm gonna come to the end of my life and I'm gonna breathe my last breath. Holy and healthy living, Yep, I'm staying disciplined in all areas of my life, getting stronger, preparing for this challenge that I hope that you will prepare yourself for. Share this post, invite some other people to join us in this super participation challenge. Friday morning, 6.30, on the dot, Facebook Live. Hey, if you're on this health journey, you need to revamp it, reconstruct it, contact Heather and I. We're ready to help you. We got the plan that works and we keep working the plan. May God bless you, holy and healthy living, and I will see you guys for sure Friday morning, 6.30 for that super participation challenge. Are you feeling weary, burdened, saddened? Do you feel like the stress of life is weighing you down? You know, I wasn't going to do a video today on my walk. I got up this morning, uh, come out. I got to my favorite spot. And as I get to my favorite spot, I tried to, it won't flip. Uh, here it is. Let me flip that. This is my favorite spot right here. As I look to this side here, the fog, the darkness, and then I look to this side and I see that the sun is shining. 
you know, for many people, we don't think the sun is shining on our life anymore. We don't feel good. We feel burdened down. We get up and we just go through the mundane, everyday life. Uh, I was one of the world's worst of wanting to stay in bed until the very last second. And then whenever I would get up, I would just burden around. Morning was not my time. And what I realized with this heavy life, there is a foundation for my life. And no, it's not health, though I'm on a health journey. No, it's not even my mental capacity because that matters and I get it. But this thing that really is the foundation of my life is Jesus. He loves you and the burdens and the pains that you have in your life that I know I will see someone when I say Jesus, they click off and then someone will click back on. But what I know is, is that you are loved. And I want you to see that in your life, you may only see the dark valley of your life, but I promise you there's more to come because every single day the sun is still shining. This is my favorite spot of my walk every day to see this and I take pictures of it. I want you to know today that you are loved. I am on a health journey, but I'm on a holy and healthy living lifestyle. I want you to know that I'm here to help you in your journey too. Come join me. Take this moment to realize you are loved and that the burdens of your life may seem so dark and valley ridden. But the sun is coming up. He loves you. And I'm cheering for you. I look forward to talking to you soon. Three reasons your diet is failing you. As I come outside today, I don't know who left the air conditioning on outside from yesterday and all the other days when it was getting hot. But it's obviously cooler cloudy and I realize there's some things that happen and I use the word diet uh, because on this health journey of life uh, diet is the thing that we go on and we go off of uh, to get to a better weight that we want to and we're on again off again we lose weight we gain weight so three things that I want us all to understand three reasons why your quote unquote diet isn't working. Number one, it's not sustainable. We do these things that are not sustainable and when it's not sustainable, what I mean by that is, is consistency. Can I consistently do this for the rest of my life? See, a diet is not something you go on and then go off of for a moment, a diet is what we eat every day. Can you consistently do this? Most diets that we see out there today, you can't be consistent. You're not going to be able to sustain that. It is hard. Number two, reason why most people's diets fail them is because they don't have community. They don't have community with other people who are doing things similar and they can talk with them. They can see how they're doing it. They can see how they're overcoming it. They can see the problems that they have. They don't have coaches to come alongside them to cheer them on. They don't have other people that are in groups that are cheering them on. They do it by themselves. Even people in their own house, they're not cheering them on. Come eat cake. Come eat this. Come eat that. I mean, the other day I was somewhere. Somebody said, come on, eat a piece of cake. I said, no, thank you. And they're like, you're just judgmental. Okay, we don't have people to support us. So we understand that, that first and foremost, it's not sustainable. You can't be consistent with most of the stuff. You don't have community. But number three, and it's a major reason why your diet is failing you, and it's mental. Most diets, all they do is they focus on food. And they don't say why you're eating the food. They don't give you any information on what can change about how you see food. They don't give you information on how to change the mental working of it. See, the problem with your diet is not the food you're eating. 
the major problem is why you're eating that food. So, I want you to know that what I'm doing, this out walking today, getting some activity as I call it, the plan I'm on, it's sustainable. The plan I'm on has community. We have coaches. I'm a coach. Heather's a coach. We're here to help you. Number three, I am so working on optimizing my mental workings that it's not what I eat has been the problem. It's why I eat it. And until I figure that out, my diet's always going to fail me because it won't be sustainable. I won't have community to help me. And I won't have the mental workings and changing of how I see food. And until I get that, I'm going to keep failing every day. I want you to know that I'm cheering for you. I'm rooting for you. What I'm doing is sustainable. I love it. I'm feeling good at the age of 50. I want you to contact Heather, myself. Do it today. Don't worry about excuses. Come with that why. Because this is life changing, not just a day change. Hey, I still got a little ways to go in this walk. I'm hoping when I get back, I got three messages saying, contact me. I want something sustainable. I want community. And I want to change how I see food. Hey, may God bless you. And I look forward to talking to you later.